Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. I want to apologize for not putting out so many updates lately. I've been working strenuously on new software to be able to do uh, streaming and to be able to do live um, video conferencing with the members and call in shows and stuff like that. It's really complicated, and uh, as they say, it's very hard to teach an old dog new tricks. So I'm an old dog and I'm learning new tricks right now. Um, I'm, I'm working with Open Broadcaster um, broadcasting software right now. And uh, hopefully it's going to give me the ability to have what I'm showing on the screen and look at videos and interact with people on Skype and um, have a chat window going. And I'm trying to get all that working at, at one time and it just becomes extremely complicated so thanks for bearing with me on that now this is the chart that I have brought up a lot and this is going to be important because of what we're going to talk about tonight and it's my opinion that they're going to collapse the system all at once we're going to see that when we start to look at some of these stories about Jade Helm and some of the strange stories with these Walmart stories I'm going to look at before we do that I want to read the latest from Jeff Nielsen, Bullion Bulls Canada, um, but just so you can see on this chart, this is we're at a very, very extreme point here. They're pushing again into new highs. This is the Dow Jones 30 and the silver spot price crossed over each other. You can see that silver is, is very, very low relative. We've already talked about that. It's it's an incredible buy right now. And the stock market is very, very overpriced. But they have an incentive to have as many people in the system before they collapse the system. And I've pointed out before in a previous video the reason why that is. The reason why that is is for the amount of buy-in that they want to get. The larger number of people that they have who are left completely penniless or are utterly wiped out or uh, would be willing to accept a 50% haircut or whatever the circumstances are, uh, willing to ta uh, take the new SDR as the new currency or buy into some electronic money or whatever the system is, it's in their interest to have as many people dependent on the paper system when it collapses as possible to get that buy-in. Now, let's look at this Jeff Nielsen article. This is Bullion Bulls Canada. I don't agree with Jeff on everything, but it's kind of interesting because he talks about capitalism the way it's supposed to work. Um, so I, I guess he's a free market guy, but we kind of go back and forth on that. But he's dead on with what's happening and what's going to happen with the banks. They've been very obvious about it. So let's read this. How your bank account will disappear. A little less than three years ago, a commentary was published which drew considerable attention how your bank account could disappear. The subject matter behind that piece was the institutionalized financial crime being committed at that time based upon the totally incomprehensible crime euphemism rehypothecation. The supposed justification and precedent being established with this financial crime was to enable financial institutions to convert, i.e. steal, any financial assets in their possession in order to cover their own large financial losses, losses generally arising from the reckless gambling in our markets, which is now endemic amongst all such institutions. In the case of rehypothecation, the legal justification for the crime was contractual in nature. Account holders who unwittingly entered into accounts where in the legal fine print the institution holding these accounts was allowed to steal their assets after it suffered financial losses in transactions to which these account holders were not connected in any way. As was noted in the original commentary, it would have required nothing more than the insertion of such fine print into the banker's contracts for their bank deposits to have technically allowed this banking crime syndicate to begin stealing people's bank accounts to indemnify it from any and all financial losses. As it turned out, rehypothecation did not end up being a vehicle for the mass theft of bank deposits or any of other financial assets, but this was only because these banksters had already turned their thoughts to an even larger scheme for institutionalized financial theft. Rehypothecation was ultimately a clumsy tool for mass financial theft. It required one crime, i.e. rehypothecation, for each supposed financial loss which the bank in question was claiming to have suffered. 
The one bank was looking for some much more efficient means of mass confiscation of paper assets. Keep that in mind. Mass confiscation of paper assets. That's what we are looking at. With reapplication, the corrupt kangaroo courts of the U.S. judicial system had already rubber-stamped the proposition that it was acceptable for financial institutions to steal any and all financial assets to cover their own losses merely because they controlled those financial assets. What the one bank wanted was a form of financial crime which offered all the stealing potential of rehypothecation, but was systemic in nature rather than requiring the bankers to steal on a loss-by-loss basis. Enter the bail-in. Once again, the bankers were and are endeavoring to cover up their naked stealing of financial assets with an utterly meaningless euphemism. However, in the case of the bail-in, the one bank is simply combining two forms of its previous frauds, the abominable rehypothecation and the bankster's legendary infamous bailouts. The inherent fraud of rehypothecation is obvious. However, the same inherent fraud behind all of this endless, phony, absurd bailouts may be less obvious to readers. The crash of 2008 provided the ultimate example of such fraud and thus provides the best means of explaining and demonstrating it. Let us put aside for the moment that all the losses which the big banks claimed in pseudo-panic were about to destroy them in 2008 were illusory and imaginary. With all these big banks under the control of a single puppet master, the one bank, and with all these losses owed between its various tentacles, these supposed financial losses were never anything but a financial sham of unprecedented proportions. However, even if we assume that all of these faux losses actually existed, the bailouts which our corrupt governments rubber-stamped following that manufactured crash were fundamentally fraudulent at a far more basic level. And he's got to read more how your bank account will disappear. Interesting. I haven't followed that, so let's click on that. Maybe um, Jeff is... uh... Hmm. Okay. Looks like he's expanded it. So anyway, he goes into Austria, state banks and stuff like that. And... uh, it's pretty clear what we're talking about here. Um, I agree with him 100%. I think they've been fairly clear about their intentions that they intend to to steal everything. And they're probably going to get away with it. But it it appears that they are preparing for this. Now, as I showed you on this chart, I think this chart tells you that there's going to be a violent and dramatic reversal. Some of the news stories that have been hitting lately are very, very disturbing. I wanted to take you to one that we posted on the blog. If you looked on the member side, I put a link to this. This is very, very strange stuff going on here. This is, you've probably heard of Jade Helm. Now, this is a practice exercise, supposedly, by the military. If you remember when Obama was elected, one of the things that he said that seemed quite bizarre at the time was that we needed to have a domestic military force that was as large or larger than our foreign military force for what? Well, some of these things are starting to come together. I'm going to play this one video here of this strange story of these Walmarts, six different Walmarts, all announcing at the same time that they're closing for six months. This just happens to fit in with that timeline window of Jade Helm. So let's play this real quick here. Hey, everybody. With Operation Jade Helm and all of the other exercises we've been seeing from the ones that are pre-Jade Helm, you're talking about the the FEMA dissident-looking exercise in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Of course, the airport uh, military takeover exercise in Texas. Just a couple weeks ago, we're seeing the dirty bomb drill in California. And we're seeing all of these other exercises go on. And so check this out. This is what I want to show you in regards to this Jade Helm exercise. We've been seeing that at the beginning there was only seven states on the document. And of course, it's now up to like 10 or 11 states. Uh, Everybody knows that, of course, Louisiana's got Fort Polk here, Fort Bliss here. And Oklahoma starts right here in the corner here and goes over this way. And then, of course, you have Missouri, Illinois, blah, 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 right? So Oklahoma's here. The reason why I'm telling you all this, follow along with me, 
here, folks. Mass Walmart closures all on a Monday night and all reportedly from the exact same problem. Livingston, Texas. Closing for six months, displacing 400 workers. Closing on a Monday night. They say for renovations of plumbing. Right here. Pharmacy Vision Department will remain open 14 days. Plumbing issues temporarily close Walmart at Amaral and Memorial. Tulsa, Oklahoma. According to Walmart representative, the problem will require extensive repairs. The store will close seven Monday night until repairs are made. We will immediately begin the process to address these issues. Other Walmarts across the United States are experiencing similar problems. Plumbing issues at two Walmart, Texas Walmarts, are forcing stores in Midland and Livingston, Texas, to close for six months. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. Now, this is a real story. You can see the links there. I just wanted to read to you some of the comments here. I cherry-picked a few comments here from the YouTube users. This is very strange that they would announce all on the same night that they're closing these stores for six months they're laying off the entire staff and it's for plumbing issues and one of them they wouldn't even discuss it so let's read these comments here uh, that kind of sum up what uh, the people think about this i'm a contractor and they build a walmart in six months a Walmart store does not have a lot of plumbing in them, so the story kind of stinks. Another thing, until now, they would never close down a Walmart for any repairs or remodeling work. It would always be done while the store is open with the affected area cordoned off. I've done this kind of work many times. Someone else says, regarding the Poco Rivera, California location, quote, James Enriquez, the city's public works director, said officials have not been notified of plumbing issues at the store. The company would be required to pull permits before undertaking extensive work. Quote, if I were a property owner, I'd want to make sure my store was closed as little as possible, Enriquez said. I would want a permit to be in place the day I was going to close. We haven't received anything. Now, that's a public works director. Here's another uh, person's comment. Funny because the 24-hour Walmart by my house upgraded to a super center. It doubled in size and never closed once. They had to do all the plumbing for the bathrooms and the deli that were added and still never shut the doors once. The store remained open 24-7 throughout the entire renovation. So what plumbing issue could possibly cause them to close one store, let alone multiple stores? Um, none. If they can run all new plumbing and keep a store open the entire time, then they can fix a plumbing issue and stay open. And the last comment, never ever a company would close all stores for renovation or anything else at the same time for such a long time and even fire all employees. This is utter BS. It has definitely other reasons, by the way. If something like this happens, it would be very, very easy for another company to replace Walmart and take over the market, even in only six months. Also, think about how many millions would lose if the markets got closed. There's something big you've discovered here, Professor Doom. Now, I linked it to this very disturbing video of this quote-unquote homeless uh, family. They're actually a band that, uh, a family band that travels. They came from Idaho. They were in Cottonwood, Arizona, and they get in a confrontation with the police in the Walmart parking lot, apparently over a scuffle that happened at the Walmart bathroom. Kind of strange coincidence. The video was released right about the time actually was released exactly when these other Walmart stories hit. Is there a connection? I don't know. In this crazy universe, who knows? But what went on here is absolutely shocking because one of these kids, his name is Enoch Gaber, is dead now. A 21-year-old tried to take the gun of a police officer and was not would not back off with the baton and the taser, and finally he was executed. I'll show you the video here. We need to separate these folks and talk to them. No, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna separate me from my family. We're gonna go in handcuffs. No, don't touch me. You don't, don't, don't. Get off me. Jesus, I'm sorry. Now, if you look over here on the 
on the right hand side of your screen. This gentleman is a Walmart employee. He is the uh, security guard from Walmart. He's fighting this guy. All of these, as the police have pointed out, all these people had been trained in going for the eyes and the ears and the face of the police officers. They roll off tasers. Um, we're going to see here on the right hand side pretty quick where they, the, the actual struggle is off the screen but they come onto the screen where there, two of them are on a police officer trying to take his gun and this is going to be where one of them is actually killed. Another one is shot in the stomach. See, this guy's tased over here. He comes right back up. The father, who's right here, says, You're hitting children. Okay, this is going to be the struggle over here where these guys end up going for this officer's gun. And ultimately, one of them has to be executed. Okay, here's the struggle here. This guy was maced. He comes right back. They've got my gun. Get down. They're aiming. He's trying to take the officer's gun. The officer shot in the leg. This officer here tries to beat him off of there, and he will not stop going for the gun. Ultimately, this officer is going to shoot him in the head when he determines that this officer could die. There, he just executed him. Enoch Gaver is now dead. This is not a hoax. As far as I can determine, that was not a hoax. That actually happened. Now, these people, these people are members of a religious cult. They're members of the Hebrew sacred names hebrew roots movement they believe that we're already in the tribulation period they believe that's why they don't work for a living uh, they have four able-bodied well now they have three able-bodied uh, sons that could be working plus the father and uh, that's what the bible commands us to do so um, i know not everyone's a christian but i wanted to read to you my perspective on this i don't think this is anything that we can argue about. Um, some people will disagree. I personally don't believe that the arguments that people make about the revolution in this country, quote unquote, first of all, I don't believe it was a revolution. I actually believe that it was a war. And uh, I don't believe that the founding fathers overthrew the government. Actually, I think they, they had an established government that was attacked by a foreign power. But be that as it may, this is what the Bible says about fighting the police. This is the verse that Enoch Gaver should have learned. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, yes, pay your taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. That is very clear to me. I hope it's clear to you. It seems to me that there are a number of forces now that are 
preparing us for some type of catastrophic collapse. And my contention with this Walmart coincidence, we'll call it, um, maybe they're telling the truth. Maybe they are doing some type of plumbing. Perhaps they're getting ready to turn these Walmarts into some type of FEMA distribution centers. One thing they would have to have, I don't think that, I think the people who are saying, well, they're going to be FEMA camp, that doesn't make any sense. You don't keep people in a Walmart. That's not what is, in my opinion, what could possibly happen. But what could happen is that they are doing some plumbing renovation and they're putting in a tremendous number of larger bathrooms, like this scuffle was uh, caused by for homeless people to come in there and perhaps if the currency collapse there will be some type of rationing um, we don't know but these types of stories seem to indicate and the news from Jeff Nielsen and the markets themselves seem to indicate that something like this may be coming and if this is coming you do not want to be in the Walmart parking lot in fact we don't go to Walmart because there's nothing that we would get there. Um, certainly none of the food we would want to eat and uh, most of the products, um, you can get them somewhere else that are much better. So it's my opinion that they are preparing us for some type of catastrophic collapse. As Dave from the X-22 report says, they have to create something to cover for the collapse that's inevitable. They've made too many promises they can't pay. These paper promises are going to come down. Ultimately, I believe that your protection is going to be these precious metals, which are going to go up when this collapse happens. And we'll talk to you next time.